The Dawn of Ragnarok third DLC still hasn't been announced at the time of this video and we are firmly in the holiday season right now which is actually really bamboozling to be honest with you as there's even more new information that we're going to talk about in this video that seems to feature prominently in this upcoming DLC that being a completely new armor upgrade level which will replace the actual mythical armor sets as well as new Odin runes that actually socket into armor sets and have special powers so not just the Odin runes that we can actually see featured around England in Ireland at the moment. Now the reason why I say it is confusing that this DLC hasn't been officially announced is because this information has been found in the game files by Pedda and this info just adds the encyclopedia worth of information that Ubisoft have decided to load onto the base game with every update. The most recent being the 1.4 Tombs of the Fallen update and it is open to interpretation why they actually do this because I'm told that all of this info is really easily accessible by anybody who knows actually how to get hold of it. But even so I'll thank go out to Pedder for bringing us all of this cool information to talk about and speculate on but he even says so himself even though this info has been uploaded by Ubisoft to the Valhalla client it is very much subject to change so just bear that in mind now at the moment in the game we have four gear levels we've got the fine superior flawless and the current top level being mythical and it does seem that in this new Ragnarok DLC we'll have a new divine level armor set added to the system usurping the mythical as the kind of top level upgrade which will also be applied to all armor sets by the way as Pedda has found the Raven Clan armor set noted as being upgradable to this kind of divine level as well as all of the other main armor sets in the game so it seems like this won't just be an isolated upgrade for specific Ragnarok DLC armor sets but rather this divine level can actually be applied to all of the armor sets currently in the game across all DLCs and of course yeah the main game but to actually upgrade to the divine level we'll need some sort of resource such as the carbon nickel and tungsten ingots that we've actually picked up in the game before to kind of upgrade our armor to all of these different levels and well to be honest with you it looks like this mechanic seems to be continuing here so a potential grind fest on the horizon but it looks like we're going to be using a platinum ingot to actually use at a blacksmith to then upgrade our armor set to the divine level and Pedder actually tells me that it was originally named as chromium but it seems that platinum is now the name that they've kind of settled on and that's what they're going with and actually this is a really good example of what Pedder means in terms of subject to change so expect that kind of yo-yoing of names even more so before launch I reckon but I do think that this chromium or platinum mechanic will remain the same as it does state that this ingot will be used to enhance the quality of a piece of gear from mythical to divine so even though the names change I still think that this is going to be the mechanic that's going to be making an appearance in this Ragnarok DLC. Now that's all well and good but with all of these armor sets being upgraded to this divine level will that actually mean that they will subsequently change in appearance such as the superior armor model then does when it's upgraded to mythical? Well at the moment Peda says no but there is a few visual changes that look like they will be implemented so we can easily differentiate them in the character UI screen. So for example if the mythical to divine armor sets aren't visually changing then there has to be something there which is easy for us to understand and what's one from the other. Now Pedder's had a rummage around and there is something here that's going to actually make it easier for us to actually figure out what's mythical and what's divine and the first one is the actual gear card frame that you can see around all of the armor and weapons in game and I would say it is probably the best way to know what upgrade level you're currently at in regard to your items just by having a quick glance in the character UI menu just because of their color and detail and it does seem that this gold mythical frame will actually change this divine platinum frame instead as you can kind of see on your screen right now hopefully I have nailed that video editing transition here because this is the actual picture of the divine frame that Pedder has found in the game files now when it comes to gear and as we've just mentioned it doesn't look like we'll get any visual upgrades or changes per se but rather we're going to have this purple gold silver glittery animation applied to it while we're actually browsing in that character UI menu and we've actually got a picture from Pedder as you can see here so you can kind of better understand what I'm trying to describe so I reckon this sparkly overlay will feature in the menu menus but then not actually transition into the game world so you're not going to be running around with purple gold sparks coming off your armor set if that makes sense. So if the armor isn't changing visually and at this stage all we do seem to be getting is a purple overlay with the promise of more ingot grinding to actually get to this divine level. What's the actual point in all of this apart from presumably a slight increase in overall base stats for the actual armor set itself? Well Pedder has found another divine card overlay for the runes and this is actually called a Odin rune slot 
before we do tuck into these new runes, if you felt like you've learned anything new in the video so far, and of course, only if you wouldn't mind, a very swift like down below only takes a second, and it really does genuinely help me out, so thank you very much. Now, these Odin runes, best guesstimations here, but it seems like when you upgrade your armor to the divine level, you'll also have access to an improved Odin rune slot on that piece of armor. Again, this is presumably going to be replacing the diamond rune slot, or perhaps it's just going to run alongside it as a kind of addition with specific Odin runes that you can only obtain in Svartalfheim slotting into them. Now, these Odin runes are actually noted in the game files as enhancing your powers to give you other fantastical abilities that will need to upgrade our gear to divine quality to actually use them. Additionally, it goes on to say that we'll need to socket them in divine quality gear only to benefit from their effects. And Pedder has actually found over 22 Odin runes noted in the game files, each with its own unique ability, which you can then use in game only if you socket it in the divine armor upgrade rune slot. I hope I'm making sense. It did initially take me some time to get my head around this, but just essentially know that you upgrade your armor to divine level, you get a new rune slot, which has special abilities and powers, which you can then only pick up in Svartalfheim. That's essentially what we're getting at here. However, before we go through some more of these interesting runes, there's a couple of them which actually reference Huga. So for example, one Odin rune called the Bloodshirt notes that every time we actually lose some health, when we've got this rune socketed, we actually gain some Huga. Now that seems to be in reference to Odin's Bracer, which also seems to have actually been renamed now to the Huga Rip, which as noted in the game files, thanks to Pedder, allows Havi to actually acquire Huga or powers from enemies that will actually allow you to temporarily perform otherwise impossible abilities, otherwise known as Odin abilities, which we actually covered in depth in another video. The thing is though, using these powers actually cost Huga or mana, which can actually be obtained by looting enemies, interacting with the digital shrines and Huga blooms in the world. So it does seem that these new Odin runes, which I imagine we obtain just like other socketable runes in the game, but the contrasting thing here is that, that they're only available in Svartalfheim, will actually buff and increase the effect of Odin abilities when actually using Odin's Bracer or this Huga Rip, whatever you actually want to call it. Now, I think this hypothesis isn't too far off, to be honest, as one of the Odin runes we actually have here is called Spectral Flash, where if we do socket this rune in the Divine Armor set, it allows the player to teleport, which is one of the Odin's abilities, and then once the teleport spell is complete, Yacht and Glamour is then reapplied. So Yacht and Glamour is also another Odin ability that allows Havi to camouflage himself amongst the Yacht and NPC. So this basically means that it's refreshed because the Yacht and Glamour ability is on a 30 second timer. So if you keep teleporting, you'll be able to essentially stay camouflaged throughout your actual game session, depending if you're pretty good or not. So it does look like there is an actual purpose to these divine upgrades, which will actually have a decent impact on gameplay, depending upon the rune that you select, if not visually on the armor set itself, which I don't actually mind, to be honest, because if it meant that we just had to grind for another armor level upgrade, as in we actually had to spend our time collecting platinum ingots for no benefit other than just a base stat upgrade to the armor set itself, then that would have actually sucked, being a grind fest and a complete waste of time in my opinion. But I do see some decent potential in these new Odin runes, especially if they enhance a certain type of gameplay that you yourself enjoy playing. In fact, there's actually too many runes to mention in one video here, so instead of just holding them back for a future video or whatever, I'm actually just going to put them all up on your screen right now so you can have a look in your own time or take a screenshot if you're interested and then kind of have a look through, see if there's anything here that you like the look of. And of course, our thanks again go out to Pedder to getting these across to us so we could actually discuss them and have a first look at them. That's on top of everything else he's found. Cheers, mate. And also, if you haven't already, do come join our awesome Discord community of over 700 members. There really is some great people here and it would be awesome to see you in the lobby. I'll also be covering more info soon, by the way. So if you do like to keep up to date on everything Valhalla and would like to be the first to know what's actually coming, do consider clicking the notification bell so you can find your way back to the channel very easily. And I think that's going to do it for me on this one, folks. I do hope that you enjoyed the video and as usual, coffee's on me.